In conjunction with the wireline operation, the pressure in a worker verizer needs to be reduced from 110 to 84 bar. They line up for depressurization to a test separator. In other words, they check all the valves to ensure they are in the correct position. When they are done, they signal all clear to open the test separator. A detector registers gas and the alarm goes off. In the course of a couple of minutes, almost 80 kilograms of gas is released. This incident is very serious. What happened? Reducing pressure in a workoverizer involves both drilling and operational systems on the platform. They line up for depressurization to a test separator. A valve map is used to make sure the valves are in the correct position. However, in this case, the driller overlooks two open valves, which, according to the valve map, should be closed. In good faith, the driller contacts operations to get them to open the valve to the test separator. The two open valves, overlooked by the driller, are the direct cause of the ensuing gas leak. Immediately afterwards, gas is detected, first by a single detector in the ventilation shaft, then three other detectors confirm gas. When a gas leak has been confirmed, the general alarm goes off automatically. An order to check and report is given over the PA system. Now, the driller discovers the two open valves and orders them closed. The outside operator reports that he does not detect gas on his own detector in the areas where the permanent detectors were set off. So, the emergency plan for gas detection is not initiated. The general alarm is stopped and an announcement is made that the gas leak has been checked and cleared. How could this happen? Let's take a closer look at the underlying causes of this incident. Here are some central questions for you to discuss. You can click on the questions to see what the investigation shows. Was the planning good enough? Regardless of the cause, preparations for this job are very inadequate. There is no review of the operation beforehand, neither between the driller and the drilling assistant, nor between drilling and operations. Even though the operation affects both drilling and operational systems, there is still no procedure or local practice that describes collaboration between the two work crews. The split of responsibilities between those involved is unclear. How is the situation at your place? Were the control routines good? The investigation of the incident shows that no one verified the valve lineup before starting the operation. Do you do verification? How was the communication? It comes out that the communication, both internally and between work crews, was insufficient and unclear. Do you practice good communication? What about risk understanding? The investigation shows that none of those involved understood the operation in its entirety. Neither does it seem that anyone had sufficient understanding of the risk this operation represented.
How was the follow-up after the incident? There is uncertainty concerning routines for internal notifications. When the general alarm went off, a check and report announcement was made, not a mustering announcement in accordance with alarm instructions. The outside operator reports that he cannot detect gas in the areas where the permanent detectors were activated. The general alarm is stopped and an announcement is made that the gas detection has been checked and cleared. The investigation team indicates that the gas leak should have been investigated more thoroughly and the emergency plan for gas detection should have been initiated. Of the emergency management team, only the platform manager and the drilling manager meet up at the emergency control centre. Incidents like this are very dangerous. What can we learn from this serious incident? Here are some measures that were initiated in the aftermath of the gas leak. This incident was reviewed with everyone who was involved. To improve control of valve status before initiating operations, a checklist requiring a double sign-off has been implemented. Emergency plans were reviewed and improved. All barriers, both technical and organisational, were mapped and improved. There is general agreement that there must be focus on good communication and reciprocal understanding when opening between two different systems. And that responsibilities always have to be clarified for operations involving several parties. Do you set aside enough time to plan operations when several work crews are involved? Do you set aside enough time for all control routines? Is communication planned and do you set aside enough time for communication during the operation? Do you set aside enough time for a thorough review and follow-up of incidents? This incident shows us what can happen when a series of hasty decisions are made. There is nothing to indicate that this operation was conducted under time pressure. Still, it seems like many of the dangerous situations that arose were caused by stress and that those involved did not take the situation seriously. Have you ever experienced dangerous situations resulting from stress? Do you think your job is planned well enough? Are you able to fully concentrate on the tasks you need to perform? Discuss these questions before you go on. Another common thread for this incident that comes out during the investigation is that those involved had inadequate risk understanding. How do you practice identifying hazards and understanding risk? Can you be better? Have you received training in risk understanding? Our work is never so important or so urgent that we don't have time to do it safely.